what's going on guys back again today to kind of give you guys a look at and little update video on my dc multiverse figure collection uh, i finally got some shelves in the basement i put out a little short youtube short showing off the the shelf but i've made a few changes even since making that short and i also wanted to do just a longer video showing the collection now that i've got pretty much all of it out on display so I guess we'll start down here with the uh, overall, this is what I call just the overall DC shelf. And what I really need to do is get some kind of like raised tier steps, like bleacher type deal going on in there so that the, the characters in the back can be kind of elevated and we can actually still get a good look at them. Cause right now they're all level with each other. And these are seven inch scale figures. They start to hide each other very well. Uh, if you are not trying, if you, if you don't have some kind of, system to kind of like raise the ones in the back up and you you can only fit so many on a shelf it gets cluttered quickly so uh green arrow i'm not sure if uh he's new to the collection my collection as far as the youtube channel goes but i have had him for a little while beast boy is new aquaman is i've shown him on the channel before uh that green lantern is new never seen him in a video the alan scott green lantern that they made him young. It was an interesting choice on McFarlane Toy's part to do him as a young guy. I mean, I guess you could just argue that it's, it's supposed to be him back in, like, the 40s when the JSA was, like, first starting out. Uh, I, I would have also liked, as an accessory to come with him, would have been an alternate head where he's, like, older. He's kind of got, like, gray. He's kind of graying around the temples a little bit. I feel like that would have been a nice accessory for him. <coughs> Excuse me. But, oh well. Uh, I do plan... It, like, the Jay Garrick Flash figure, which I don't have yet, is in the same way. Like, it's it's Jay Garrick Flash, but he's he looks pretty young. So I guess the, the way Todd and his team over there are going with this is that it's going to be... They're going to make the JSA, but they're going to be in their prime. It's not going to be old JSA like they are now. Lobo have had him for quite a while. Uh... Static Shock, Blue Beetle, Booster Gold, Grifter, they've all been on there. Uh, we got the modern Blue Beetle. This is the movie figure. Uh, this is the one that came with the wings. I'll kind of move Superman over a little bit and get a better look at him. This is the one that came with the wings, but I cut the wings off of those two, uh, like, antenna-type things so I could just plug those into his back and have those out. Because those are, like, those little antenna things are a standard part of Blue Beetle's, like, look, those are usually part of his costume, and they're usually visible at all times, whether he's got the wings or not. What I think I'm going to do to kind of comic book style this guy up a little bit more is uh, you can tell that the black on the body is kind of got this, like, grungy, kind of almost like gunmetal tarnished look to it. I'll probably just take some matte black acrylic paint and make all of that just a much darker, flatter black, and that should kind of give him a bit more of a comic book look to it. That's going to be done sometime in the future. And then we got Captain Adam. He's new. He came out a little short, but he's not one of those characters that, like, he's not my, one of my favorite, like, top-tier characters. So I'm not too worried about it. I'm still, I still got this Gal Gadot Wonder Woman that I customized. I gave her the arms and the legs of the Last Night on Earth Wonder Woman. And then I kind of painted her hair a bit darker black. This is still just a stand-in for my Wonder Woman on the shelf until we get a nice rebirth Wonder Woman. I know we are going to be getting a classic Wonder Woman, comic book Wonder Woman, but honestly, fuck that. Like, I think that Wonder Woman's original comic book costume, a lot of the DC characters' original comic book costumes just didn't age well. They've either got underwear on the outside, or Martian Manhunter was practically naked, or Wonder Woman is a Greek Amazonian princess, but for some reason she's wearing the red, white, and blue Star Spangled Banner bullshit outfit. Like, none of them aged well. But now that we finally kind of found, you know, between the Gal Gadot live-action movies and the DC Rebirth comic era, we found Wonder Woman's ideal look. It's pretty much this. So, I'm basically looking for this. If nothing else, I might get the, uh the classic comic book Wonder Woman coming out, I might get that to put the head of it onto this figure if it works out. Uh, kind of just passed over this Superman here. This is obviously a custom and this Batman. So uh, these are customs. This is the Lieber Mayho 
Page Puncher's Batman, but I painted the body a better gray because it was actually green. And then I bought a Zurin R Batman and I took the head and painted the head black and popped it on there. So this is just like the definitive Batman to me. It works so well, no lame underwear, still has a comic booky look to it while at the same time looking armored and protected. Like he, 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 he looks bulletproof, like that's the key. You know what I mean? The cape is nice. This is, this is fantastic. This is the best Batman figure I've ever owned. It's my absolute favorite. I'm really happy with how this guy turned out. And then over here we have my custom Superman. I call this the, it's the closest we've gotten to like a Superman reborn outfit, which is the best Superman costume ever because it gets rid of the lame underwear. I don't care what anybody says about how it's like, oh, it's a traditional staple of the character's look. Like it has to be there. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It's old and dumb. All right, it just is. Underwear on the outside of your costume is dumb. If any, if any of us in the year 2023 woke up tomorrow with superpowers and we decided to be a superhero, none of us in the year 2023 would design our super costume with underwear on the outside. All right, none of us would. It can go away, all right, it's fine. The world will not end if we get rid of Superman and Batman's underwear on the outside of their costume. So moving back over here, John Constantine had him for a while. Uh, Frankenstein is new. I uh, really liked the Justice League Dark, especially during the New 52, so I wanted to get him. I also like leaning into DC's more like, uh, I don't want to, I don't know, I guess you could call it Vertigo side of things, but it's more just like the the creepy, creaturey, supernatural monster side of things. You know, John Constantine, Frankenstein, Etrigan, Dr. Fate, Swamp Thing. Uh, I, th I feel like we're going to be getting a Zatanna figure here in the near future, simply because the uh, the Superwoman, the crime syndicate Superwoman figure, that would that there's a lot of parts of that figure that would double well as a Zatanna figure, so I think that'd be an easy one for McFarlane to go for. I don't know if that's what he's planning, but I, I saw that Superwoman figure for the crime syndicate, and I thought this could easily be Zatanna. We could turn this into a Zatanna figure pretty quickly. Etrigan back there, New Fifty Two Etrigan, it's a badass figure. Really like that one. Modern Martian Manhunter, excellent. Another example of the costume being updated and just being way, way better. We've got Raven of the Teen Titans, Shazam, and Dr. Fate. I do plan on building the entire Teen Titans team. Uh, I've got Raven and I've got Beast Boy so far. And then as far as other teenage superheroes go, most of the, the rest of them are up on the shelf above, which we're going to get to in a second as part of the Bat family. But Static Shock is back there as well. Um, I don't know if he's ever really part of the Teen Titans. And then, of course, Blue Beetle, the modern Blue Beetle, he's a teenager as well. I'm not sure if he's ever really been part of the Teen Titans. I know Blue Beetle was in the DC animated movie universe, but I don't know about the comics. I don't think he's ever been part of the Teen Titans during the comics, but maybe, maybe, I don't know. So moving up here to the Batman shelf, you'll notice I have the brand new Hush Batman. He is awesome. He's fantastic, except for one flaw. And the fact that there is only one flaw and otherwise he would be 100% perfect is what really fucking sucks. He's too damn tall. He's giant. We all know this. It's the same body mold that the previous versions of the Hush Batman figure have been on. It's the same body mold for the three Jokers Batman. He's too freaking tall. He dwarfs everybody way too tall he doesn't look like it if i just kind of pull the camera back here and we show batman with the bat family and all the other this is the batman shelf he doesn't look too out of place but he's way too tall like and the thing is this body mold like i said it started with the three jokers batman so people have been complaining about it being too tall since like the end of 2021 if not the very beginning of 2022 so I don't know why adjustments haven't been made. Like, I don't know why. You scale it down, shrink the legs, do something. Like, I don't know, I don't know what needs to be done here, but it, it, it could be fixable. It should have been fixed by now. Like, they went back. I, maybe it was always a plan to release this guy anyway, but this was uh, the black and gray version of the Hush Batman originally came in the two-pack with Hush. And that, that version of the figure, he had like a screaming facial expression on his head and the black of the gloves went up into the joint and they actually made the joint piece black as well and it just looked terrible and everyone everyone complained rightly so and then we got this guy 
wear neutral facial expression. Excellent. The gloves are not fucked up anymore. Excellent. But you didn't fix the height and the scale. Maybe that's just a harder fix. I don't know. But it's a shame. But as far as the bat family goes, it's pretty complete. Only other things I would maybe add to it would be like a bat woman, a huntress. Um, maybe a spoiler figure if we ever got one. But like to me, the bat family is the three Robins plus Batgirl plus maybe Catwoman. And then I also throw Batman Beyond in there because, you know, he's a, he's the Batman of the future. But I... Let's be real, he's, he's part of the Bat family. If he ever time traveled into the past, he would get along with these guys and work well with them. So that, I cut the wings off of him because I just, you know, they weren't always out in the show or the comics, so they should not They should have been a optional attachment to the figure. They should not have been permanently attached. Arkham Catwoman is just like your typical Catwoman, so she fits in good here. Uh, I got Blight back there, Batman Beyond's arch nemesis. Uh, this is the newer Nightwing body from the Teen Titans Nightwing. Uh, the Teen Titans wave, the kind of, the one that came out with Raven and Beast Boy and all of them. But I gave it the original Nightwing head because the new head, the hair was shittier. It looked like spider. It looked like he had a spider on his head. And then also he had this like really lame, stupid ass, shit eating grin on his face, and that's dumb. Uh, three Jokers Red Hood. I've been, I've been debating getting the new 52 one. I just know that the new 52 Red Hood is, once again, he has a problem with like scale. He's way too tall. And then also, for me, I like the idea of Red Hood is like, he's, he's part of the Bat family. They still maintain contact with him. They still keep in touch with him. They still work with him from time to time. But this dude kills people now. He came back from the dead, a changed man, and he is a murderer. He straight up kills. He's like the Punisher. So him and Bruce should not get along all that well. And that's why I like this version, because this one, is he's not repping the bat symbol on his chest. Like the new 52 version of Red Hood wearing the bat symbol on the chest, I feel like that's just wrong. I feel like that that's not, I feel like that's not the character at all. Like he wouldn't, he wouldn't do that. He would want to be his own thing and distance himself from Batman. And then we got the clay face figure. I highly debated not getting this one because I don't really like the fact that they put like screaming faces into the sculpt of clay face, but I wanted to support the line. I wanted to keep getting more figures and better figures. So rather than buy the, uh, the Mattel DC multiverse clay face build a figure, which is what I was going to do. I said, screw it. I'm just going to get this one. And I got Arkham Joker, which is my favorite Joker in the line and hush. So then we come up here to the final shelf and we've got all of the villains that I have so far. So we've got General Zod, turned out really well. I still stand by my thing of like McFarlane, they, they're not that great at doing facial hair on a toy. It doesn't turn out that great. Not too great at it. Superboy Prime's back there. I really wish that this head on Superboy Prime could have been swapped and put on this Superman down here just to be a younger Superman but I tried it and it just doesn't, doesn't look quite right. It's a shame because not that this is a bad face sculpt, but if I ever just wanted like a younger Superman, it would have been nice to be able to do that. Oh, by the way, side note to uh, all McFarlane DC Multiverse fans out there and on the you know one in a million shot in a dark chance that anyone from McFarlane Toys is watching this, I would love a line of DC figures from the Earth One graphic novel series. I would love an Earth-1 Batman. I would love an Earth-1 Superman. I would love an Earth-1 Green Lantern. I would love an Earth-1 Wonder Woman. I mean, Earth-1 Wonder Woman is basically just Wonder Woman. But, you know, you know what I mean? I would love an Earth-1 line of figures. That would be awesome. I know that graphic novel series is dead, but it was good while it lasted. And I would, some of the, visually, visually speaking, some of the uh, artistic choices for those characters' looks in the Earth-1 line really kind of hit. So, I like it. Mongol's pretty good. I don't think they got the colors right for his costume, but I mean, it's undeniable this is Mongol. And DC, with it being this like crazy, ever-evolving, ever-expanding multiverse where it's it's plot line, it's overall narrative, it's it's con overall continuity is so complicated. Like you can make sense of it, and I have made sense of it. I've figured out the whole, the whole thing out, and I'm debating doing a video on it. 
but it is just so complex and so complicated that uh, I think it deters a lot of people from getting into it, getting into DC Comics to the fullest. And then also what I was getting at though is like with, with the multiverse and the continuity being so complex, it's like just buy whatever version of the figure of the character is your definitive version and put it on the shelf. Like for me, that Superman and that Batman, like that Batman, is that Batman ever appeared in a DC comic? I mean, not exactly like this. I guess it's pretty close to New 52 Batman, but not quite. But still, that's my definitive Batman. And the, the multiverse and the continuity of DC is so complex that it's like, that's, that, for, like, no one can tell me that that Batman isn't real, you know? So you just pick the version you like the best. We got Eobard Thawn, Reverse Flash, I've had him for a while. Traditional purple and green armored Lex Luthor. Uh, traditional Black Adam. Necron turned out sick as hell. The only thing I would have done different, the only thing, is paint that heart red. Like a dark, nasty, maroon red. Other than that, this guy is fantastic. The scythe he came with is badass. Necron turned out just, oh my god, fantastic. Great figure. Ocean Master, another great one, turned out really good. Uh, this is one of the rare instances where I actually like the fact that he has an expression on his face, and it's not just like a neutral, stern, stoic-looking facial expression, but he turned out really good. Godspeed, another Flash villain. Every Flash villain has to be, like, super fast. Otherwise, like, I know I have Captain Cold right behind him, but let's be real. Like, how does Captain Cold stand up? How does anyone stand up to the Flash? He can move so fast you don't even know he's there. Like, you're robbing a bank, and next thing you know, your jaw is unhinged and you're in the hospital. Like, I don't understand. Uh, every Flash villain has to be a speedster, or else they just can't hold a candle to him, because he's so fucking fast. And then back there we have a uh, Soviet Superman from Superman Red Sun. And that's a pretty old figure, been out for quite a while, so we all know what the deal is with that. But that's m pretty much the entire collection. The only other ones that I have laying around are, I have the, uh, the black suit bearded Superman from the Lois and Clark storyline in a box somewhere. And then I also have Hal Jordan, Green Lantern, uh, but he does not stand up very well. I don't know what it is. They gave him like tiny ass ankles and like also McFarlane toys. If you're going to do ratcheted joints, they have to be equal on both sides. Like this leg has to be equal with this leg. Otherwise the figure ends up wonky. I understand you give us a display stand and a display base to, pu to put them on, but that doesn't always help. So yeah, a little bit of quality control with those ratchety joints. And then also this face, I, well, actually looking at it now in the camera, it doesn't look too bad. This is another thing about like DC superhero costumes that I think is dumb. This, this guy, Nightwing, Robin, they all have this little like plastic face mask over the eyes. Like that's not offering you any protection to your head or face. And it's sure as fuck not concealing your identity. So what the fuck is that little piece of shit for? That's lame as hell. But anyway, that's just a side note. So yeah, that's the collection for DC Multiverse at this point in time. I'm still collecting more, but I think these days, like, push comes to shove. To As a toy line goes, I kind of think that I kind of hold this toy line equal to Marvel Legends now. I always wanted this toy line to be just the DC equivalent of Marvel Legends, and I think at this point it is. Like, we've definitely gotten the character variety that I always wanted and that I complained about early on with this line. But that problem has definitely been fixed. They're definitely high in quality in terms of sculpt, paint, the price is good. This line is great. However, in terms of like the story in the comics, these days I'm leaning more towards Marvel just by a little bit. DC is just silly. It's just silly. It's silly, it's campy, it's cringy, it's corny. Uh, none of the hero, like there'll be an alien invasion going on and the heroes will just be like cracking witty banter jokes and just being quippy with one another and the dialogue, the dialogue is just cringy. And the, the metaphor at the end with DC, it's never, it's never like, Hey, there's a bad guy causing problems. Let's go fuck him up and then either lock him up or kill him. At the end of the day, it's always about like, we got through because we believed in ourselves and we had friendship and we had hope and hope and peace and love and tranquility and blah, 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 wussy ass crap. Like, where's the good old days of like, hey, that guy over there is the piece of shit. He's the problem. He's the villain. He's doing the bad stuff. Let's just go beat the ever living fuck out of him. And then we either lock him up or kill him. What happened to those stories? Those were, that's when superhero shit was great. 
because it resulted in like good action, uh, climactic battles with between the characters, and the stories could be a little more objective and like grounded and less abstract. When your story, when the theme of your story is friendship and love and peace and beauty and hope, that just gets too abstract and it's just it's just silly. DC Comics these days are just they're just silly. At least Marvel still seems to try to take it seriously. I know in the end, it's all just superheroes. It's fictional nonsense about characters with fictional powers dressing up in colorful costumes and doing shit. I know it's nonsense to begin with, but I don't care. I'm a 31 year old comic book fan. And the best of both, the way I merge those two things together is I want the superhero stuff, but I want it to be taken seriously like an adult would take it seriously. So, and DC's just not doing it for me these days. But as a toy line, this is awesome. Uh, I had a lot of criticism about McFarlane toys early on, um, many rants, but my opinion of the toy line now is it has hit its stride. It's fixed most of its problems. The only problem I still have with it is the scaling. Like sometimes they just, they just don't do the scale right. They'll make a character. He's way too big. He comes out way too big or way too small. And that's still a problem. But other than that, the, the sculpt is there. The paint is there. The character variety is there. Everything is there. It's great. So I'm continuing to collect this line. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Everybody else happy with DC Multiverse still collecting this line. What do you think of this collection? Let me know. Leave some comments down below. If you like this video, please hit that like button. It really helps out my channel. If you want to help out the channel even further, check out some of my other videos and maybe subscribe. Other than that, I will talk to you guys later.